Over the past 32 months, we've been exploring the construction of identities in Europe through heritage representations and performances, connecting to ideas of place, history, tradition, and belonging. As well as existing heritage practices and discourses in Europe, the research identifies means to sustain and transmit European heritages that may help to foster inclusive communitarian identities and to counteract disaffection with and division within the European Union. The project has explored many aspects from cultural policy, museum display, heritage interpretation, school curricula and political discourse to music and dance, to cuisine, rituals, and protest. With this oratorio, we are tracing Johann Gottfried Herder's rerouting of Enlightenment teleology and historiography. He believed his journey took him to the universal, yet he relished the diversity that would take him away from the fixed ideas of the past and into the heart, wherein music, in all its diversity, truly lived. Breaks 
Herder's journey followed a concept of history in which an understanding of diversity revealed that human societies were, in certain fundamental ways, the same. Cultural relativism was crucial to his thinking and itself a shift from the notion of European superiority. At the ethnographic and aesthetic confluence that Herder thought, music became deep and meaningful evidence for the universality of diversity, a perfection constituted of difference. How transitory all human structures are. Nay, how oppressive the best institutions become in the course of a few generations. The plant blossoms and fades your fathers have died and moulded into dust. Your temple is fallen. Your tabernacle, the tables of your law, are no more. Language itself, that bond of mankind, becomes antiquated. And shall a political constitution, shall a system of government or religion that can be erected solely on these endure forever?
through language. And those stories that we carry in our language are not just our own stories. They are our family stories, our histories, our communal stories. They are our nation's stories as well. A lot of this has now fallen into the hands of stupid poetasters, seemingly good-natured citizens with smoky beards brooding over steaming tankards. They are like senior forest wardens of the sea, but to no avail. They cannot hear the woods. They cannot hear the sea. They only hear their own beards rustling. Their good nature disappears the moment they turn confusedly to the present and come up against political opposition. Then the petty bourgeois in them crawls out of the woodwork. Under their string vests, their hearts beat to the rhythm of a military parade.
geographic entity. It is separated from Asia only at one point, the Bosphorus, by a small stretch of water. Instead of Christian Europe, one has to see the continent as penetrated by the three world religions that originated in the Near East. All have equal entitlements to be present and in this general, objective sense, none can be considered only as the other. They are part of Europe, part of our heritage. The peoples of Europe are a work in progress and always must be. Ethnogenesis is a process of the present and future as much as it is of the past. The past may have set the parameters within which one can build the future, but it cannot determine what that future must be.
Every individual has a different experience with the past and a different way of understanding history. Populist movements across Europe and the globe appeal to those who feel lost in diversity and forgotten in unity. Their discourse deploys historical accomplishments and stories of heroism to reconstruct a present that marks the end of multiculturalism and diversity, favoring nations built on homogeneity. It is a new narrative where differences represented by the so-called other are considered a threat to the integrity of national identity. The past is never in the past. It lives on in who we are and how we see our reality. This raises many questions as to how the past can be used to construct a nation's cultural legacy. And on each square inch of territorial space, dreams are dreamt of the glory of each race. And quietly, the wind whispers in the trees, territories are imaginary. There lies Europe. What state is it in? That of a garishly painted loony bin.
To make European heritage relevant on the ground, we need to adapt the languages and cultures of our academic disciplines to the languages and cultures of diverse communities and work with these communities, developing their capabilities from the bottom up. But we do need to tread carefully. It is often unclear who exactly the community are and from which bottom the upward development should take place. The ground that communities share and where authenticity and heritage grow their roots is the same fertile soil from which the toxic plant of populism springs. Wary of the ghosts of abuse, past and present, many of us are understandably reluctant to set foot there. Instead, we tend to discount notions of authenticity as false and dangerous. And yet, without a sense of authentic heritage, communities are alienated and become receptive to populism as a means of overcoming their sense of alienation. Can we solve that conundrum? Drawing on insights from different cultures, we might be able to recover the terms of ecologically well-grounded being and employ them creatively to grow resilient, sustainable communities. Tomorrow, songs will flow free again and new voices be born on the carrying stream.